Hello there, my dear listeners. The famous ancient Chinese classical novel, Outlaws of the Marsh, The Nine Tattooed Dragon, Chapter Nine is going to begin. Well, well, all right. Let us turn to the three brigand chiefs having a meeting in the retreat on Little Manghua. The big chief was Zhu Wu, the strategist who was expert in the use of the two swords. Although not an absolute master, he was a skillful tactician and an excellent leader. And the second of these robbers was Chen Da, also known as the River Jumping Tiger. His favorite weapon was a long lance of flashing steel. He was the most powerful fighter of the three, and can, and certainly was an uh, arrogant personality. And for the last one, who was known for us, nicknamed the White Spotted Snake, he favored using the foul chart, a sort of big sword. Well, Ju Wu now said to the others, mm, I heard recently that in the Huayin district, they've announced a price of 3,000 on our arrests and said we must be captured. Well, I'm afraid if they come for us, it's going to be a big fight. Now, one problem is that we're not very well provisioned. We can stock up with food and provisions. Then if the government troops come, we're ready to last out any attack. A uh, good idea, said Chen Da, the river jumping tiger. Mm, but why not go directly to uh, Huai Yin and ask them to lend us some uh, provisions? Let's see how they answer. Huh? No, said Yang Chun. The white spotted snake. My brother, don't go to Hua Yin. Pu Chen will be far less dangerous. But Pu Chen is just a small place. Chen Da objected. Not so much food and provisions. Much better attack Hua Yin. It's full of wealth there, plenty of money and suppliers. Yang Chun turned to the leader Zhu Wu and said, But elder brother, can't you see the point? If our um, target is Hua Yin, We'll have to pass through the Xi estate that Xi Jin, the Nine Tattoo Dragon, as they called him, is a real tiger. We should avoid provoking him, and he's never going to give us permission to go across his land. Ah, no, 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 feeble-minded, my little brother, shouted Chanda, the river-jumping tiger. If you're afraid of passing through just one uh, tiny village, how are you going 
to face the government forces. Ah, elder brother, we, we mustn't underestimate that she, that's a real, a really brave fellow. Zhu Wu was hearing aside. He agreed. Well, I have heard so also. They say he is quite fearless and truly able. Friends, let us avoid that road, all right? But Chanda began to annoy. Shut up, both of you. If you keep singing someone else's praises, all you do is destroy your own confidence, I tell you. He's only a man, isn't he? I don't reckon he's got three heads and six arms. He made immediately called upon his followers. Quick, quick, prepare my horse. We're going to attack Xi Jin's place at once. And later, we'll take Wang Yin. Yes, sir, right away. Zhu Wu and Yang Chun try hard to dissuade him, but Chen Da would never listen. His armor was attired, and he leapt on his horse, picked 150 men, and then, in a tumult of gongs and drums, descended the mountain towards the village. Bang, 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 boom, 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 boom. Now, hmm, Shi Jin happened to be right outside his house, inspecting his arms and horse when one of his followers rang up with the news of attack. And, Squire, listen, uh, what? Oh, I see. He went in his house and sounded the alarm. Pang, 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 pang. Upon this signal in front and behind, east and west, three or four hundred Xi family dependents rang to get the spears or staves and gathered ah, together ready for the fight. There they found Xi Jin with a turban on his head and an armor on his body, wearing a blue brocade and dark green boots and broad leather belt about his waist and iron protecting his chest and back. He had a bow and a sheaf of arrows with him, and in his hands was a three-pointed double-edged weapon with four holes and eight rings. Tang, 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 tang. Wow! A follower was leading his flame-red steed. She immediately leapt onto the saddle, brandished his weapon, and thirty or forty solidly built followers guarded in front of him. Wow. While eighty or ninety awkward villagers, together with all the other Xi dependents, formed up behind. With a big roar, ah, kill, kill! They marched to the row which led to the village from the north. Meanwhile, on the other side, Chen Da, the bandit from Little Manghua, was charging down the mountain with his troops. Ah, charge! Mm, 
Virginia. On reaching the valley, Sijin's saw Chanda, his head adorned with a red turban, wore a purple red doublet, boots with turn up toes, and around his waist a seven foot cord hmm, hung with bags. He rode a white stead. Oh, this white steed which held his head up proudly. <coughs> and he carried an eighteen foot steel lance. The troops on both sides raised a big roar. Oh, ah, kill, kill! As the two leaders suddenly came face to face. <coughs> well, the sword was really at this point. And what is the result? Huh. You will know in the next chapter. <laughs>